Heavenly Father, we thank you for the amazing gospel that you've given to us, that your son Jesus Christ has has saved us from sin by coming into our world, uh, by living among us, uh, by showing us your love, and then dying for us and rising again, and then sending us out and and giving all of us this amazing message of your love to share with the world. And, and so we ask that you be with us tonight and over the next several months that, um, and uh, speak to us, help us to, to learn and grow, to know your love better, and, um, and to be able to share it with others so that they too may know this amazing gift. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So, if you died today, do you know where you'd go? Cemetery? After that. I mean the afterlife. Yes, not. Well, the Bible says that all men have fallen shorts, but you can still be saved if you burn up your wicked slaves. Turn from your wicked ways, you idiot. You're an idiot. You just called him an idiot. You're not an idiot. Jesus loves you. But if you fuss with your spouse, believe, believe in your heart. Look. Tell them all his sins will be forgiven. Your sins will be forgiven. Hey, where does poop my cup? God could forgive me of my sins. No way. Also, no. I don't know. I thought no sin was so bad that he can't forgive. That's a big blow of poop. So that's not how to do it. <laughs> um, and, and actually, uh, next week our entire session is going to be on how not to. Um, and so, uh, so first of all, I want to start out with uh, some introductory material. All right. And the first, and, and for most Christians, this is pretty obvious, but I want to dig into this a little deeper. And that is just the question of why. Why do we want to share the gospel? Uh, with others. And so Acts 4.12 And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Right? And, and it's one of many passages that tell us that, that God has given us a way to salvation. All right? A free gift. It is, it is open to all. It is completely inclusive. Right? And this gift is for anyone. He gives it to us. And, and if you don't reject it, it's yours. Right? And so, um, and, and, and it's amazing how many people don't realize um, that this gift is available to them. Right? Because they've, they've gotten all different kinds of, of pictures of what, uh, uh, what Christianity is about and, and, and things like that. And, and they really don't. I, I've, I've run into so many people that where you share the gospel with them and, and really let them know about God's love for them. And they're kind of stunned. Because maybe they've heard of Jesus and, um, and they've, they've had different experiences uh, with Christianity, Christians, uh, the church. And oftentimes their experience is contrary or, or very different at least from, um, well, from Jesus. Um, and I'll give uh, an example. Um, uh, most of you have heard of Mahatma Gandhi, Right? And um, so he was in India, and, uh, and he went to, he was curious, he'd heard about Jesus and, and wanted to learn more about him, and, um, and, and was, you know, was really kind of intrigued by what he'd heard, and so he went to a Christian church in India. Um, well, it happened to be that this was a white Christian church, and, um, and apparently his skin was a little bit too dark for there. And um, and so he wasn't welcome there. And so he left. And I think, what? how different would the world be if that church had shown him the love of Christ that is for all people? And so he's famously been quoted to saying, um, I like your Christ, but he's so unlike your Christians. <laughs> or, I'm sorry, I misquoted. It's the other way around, but the same idea. Um, and unfortunately, of course, we're sinners, and um, and and so we do fail at that. 
and 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 yet the fact is that we have salvation in Christ, and 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 not just and the other. Um, Mistake that a lot of people focus on, and this was, this was even in that the video, um, is that it oftentimes it becomes all about heaven. And um, and I know that when I was even in high school, uh, in college, I, I kind of struggled with this a little bit because I thought, okay, well, if it's all about heaven, then why doesn't God just take us to heaven now? Like, what is the point of this life then? And okay, well, to share the gospel with others, but still, it seems like a bit of a gamble. <laughs> and, um, and and so I thought, boy, you know, if he had just uh, you know stopped early and and uh, it, you know at some point just said, all right, that's good. Um, really, this is all about heaven anyway. Um, it just seems like you know thousands of years of of people kind of mulling about on earth just seems sort of odd. Until I started, until I learned about what the kingdom of God is all about. And that eternal life isn't just something that we receive uh, either when we die or on the last day when Jesus comes back, but it's a gift that we receive in our baptism. Um, that, that eternal life starts now. The eternal life is today. That, that the kingdom of God is, is here among us. And you look at the parables that Jesus taught, over and over he says, the kingdom of God is like, the kingdom of God is like. All right? And if, you, and if you, you look at all of those parables, and you look at how many of them were actually about heaven, very few are. All right? Usually when Jesus said the kingdom of God is like, he was talking about life here on earth. But life here on earth, understanding who God is and his relationship to us and our relationship to him through Christ. And then once you have that perspective, once you have that focus, that changes how you talk about the gospel, how you, how you see other people, how you see yourselves. It changes everything. Right? And, and I mean, I was honestly, I was a pastor for a number of years before I really understood this idea. I was really, probably the first decade of my ministry... I was all about getting people to heaven, and um, and we'll get into this later. But but even that, um, when when you have that sort of heaven only focus, that that even misses the point of the Great Commission, where Jesus says, "Go make disciples of all nations." All right, because there's a, he didn't say go make converts; he said go make disciples. And so we'll get to that later. But. Um, but this eternal life, this is a gift that we have now. And, and when we communicate that, it makes a difference. Um, because we, it's not just that, that we want to make sure that, that people get to heaven. We want them to have eternal life now. We want them to be able to experience that now. Um, and, and tied in with that is freedom. Romans 8.15, For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And this is, this is huge. That, that we are sons of God. And that's not sexist. That's, we've, the adoption of sons, sons were the ones in this culture that received the inheritance. And so it's actually saying, yeah, women too. Women receive the same adoption as men. Right? So it's actually the opposite of sexist. And... Um, and so, so often we can, we can fall back into fear. You think about all the things we're afraid of. Right? And we all are afraid of things. And, and, so, and Paul's telling us here that, no, because we are adopted into God's family, I mean, I look at, at my kids, and especially the younger they are, the less fear they have. Now, sometimes a little too, a little not quite enough fear, right? Wanting to climb up all kinds of things that aren't really all that stable. Um, and uh, and yet, because we have God as our heavenly Father, that and we when we recognize that our whole lives, everything that we have, everything that we are, is in His hands, and He loves us, then we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to. So when we start, you know, thinking about um, about stepping out and 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 sharing the gospel with people, or you know, or just how we make decisions in our lives and, and things like that, when we recognize this is in God's hands and He's got it. 
and, and I'm just going to follow him, and if he leads me someplace that seems a little scary, well, I'm just going to trust him and follow him and know that he's looking out for me, and he's got a plan, and, and I'm in his hands, and there's no safer place to be. Right? And so, so to be able to give freedom to people who are afraid um, it's, it's a tremendous gift. perfectly qualified people take a closer look Moses was not a great speaker Jonah ran from God Jacob was a liar Noah got drunk Rahab was a prostitute David had an affair. Jeremiah was depressed a lot. Solomon was rich in wisdom, but poor in lifestyle. John the Baptist was just plain poor. Timothy was too young. Abraham was too old. Lazarus was dead. Sarah was barren. Naomi was a widow. Gideon and Thomas both doubted, and so did Sarah. Peter lacked self-control. James and John were self-righteous. Paul had a short fuse. Well, so did Peter and Moses. Actually, lots of people did. God's army isn't perfect. It never has been. It's the march of the unqualified. Get in line. I've often questioned, God, why did you choose people to be to get the message out? And why did you choose people to be pastors? Because you could have sent angels, and you know what? If we put an angel in the pulpit, like an actual living angel, number one, people would come from miles around to check that out. All right? And number two, they would get the message exactly perfect. And I thought, why people? We're going to mess it up. And then I realized at least two reasons, and there's probably more. All right, number one, because of God's amazing love. That, that God doesn't need us, but he invites us. The same way that tonight when, when we were getting uh, supper on and, uh, and my daughter Emma wanted to help. And so, so she went and got the, um, got the dishes out and, and set the table and, and did some other things to, to help get supper ready. And it probably would have been faster if we'd just done it ourselves. All right? And, uh, and you know, when, when she'd get the wrong thing out, no, 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 no the, the other kind of cup or, you know, or whatever. Um, but she wanted to help, and she felt good about helping, and she likes to help. And, you know, if God says, look, yeah, I, I could do this all by myself, right? But isn't it fun to help? Isn't it great? And, and he's saying, look, I want to involve you. In my plan, I'm going to use you, and um, and and that he does that to honor us, and it's just it's purely out of his grace that that he involves us at all. And the other thing is that one thing that we can do that angels can't do is talk about grace. I mean, they can talk about it, not like we can, because we know what it's like to be undeservedly loved. And, uh, and we know what it's like to be forgiven. They don't know what it's like to be forgiven. They don't need it. But we do. And so, wow, can we talk about forgiveness? And, um, and, and just to be able to, to share that uh, with others and, and say, yeah, this forgiveness, it's for you too. It's not, this isn't about every, people that have everything 
all put together and, and figured out. This is for people that, you know, we're all still figuring it out. And, and we mess up, and, and sometimes I get the message wrong, and, and sometimes I, um, you know, I, I, <laughs> I would say that, that I, when I, I think about um, my wife listening to me preach, that I can always sort of hear in the back of my mind her going, are you listening to yourself? <laughs> because she knows me better than any other human being on earth. And, um, and, and I've, I've, I've shared that with her, and she says, no, I'm usually too busy juggling the kids. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I, I know that, that oftentimes that, that I think, you know, who am I to be even standing here talking about this stuff. I don't, I don't deserve to be here. I'm not qualified. Um, and so, you know, when, when God called Moses, Moses said, oh, God, you know, here's God speaking to Moses from the burning bush. And, uh, and at this point, Moses is 80 years old. He spent the first, fourth of his, or the first 40 years of his life being pampered, the next 40 years in hiding, Right? Now he's 80 years old. He's on a mountain leading some sheep around. He sees this bush burning up, and he's, but it's not actually burning up. It's just burning. And he's trying to figure out what's going on. He goes over to see it, and God speaks to him. All right? And God says, Moses, I'm going to send you to set your people free. And, what, and Moses, you know, here's, here's God. And he says, Moses, you're going to go do this. And, and Moses goes, well, hold on a minute, God. You got the wrong guy. And uh, he says, oh, no, I'm in it, this uh, slow as speech or something like that. Whatever, whatever that means, if, if he had a, a speech impediment or, or just wasn't a good public speaker, whatever, whatever he kind of meant by that. And uh, God says, yeah, 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 I know. I'm, I'm going to use Aaron to do the speaking for you. But, but you know, Moses, was, he did not feel qualified at all. And, and there were other times where he said, God, I, this, these are your people. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I, I can. And God said, yeah. Yeah, you can. And he helped him out in all kinds of ways. All right? Jeremiah was um, didn't feel qualified. He said, no. When God called him, Jeremiah said, no, 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 I'm too young. I, I can't do this. Get, get somebody with more experience. All right? The apostles, I mean, well, even after after Jesus rose from the dead... And they saw him, and yay, he's alive. And so what did they do? They went fishing. Well, what was that? They went back to their regular lives. They went back to um, to just, well, I guess that's done. He's alive, good. All right? So I guess we're done now. And, uh, and it wasn't until the second miraculous catch of fish and um, and Jesus assuring Peter of that he was and you know that, that when Jesus sending Peter by saying feed my lambs feed my sheep that he said no 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 I have bigger things in mind for you um, what are some other reasons that are that we feel um, that we're just on you know don't share the gospel when the opportunities present itself. What the words that would affect that person versus the next person? Right. Yeah. 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 What was the right thing to say that for that person? Right. And yeah, there's no, there's no sort of just like, oh, if you just say these things, it's sort of the the sort of magic incantation. Then boom, they're going to go, oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Context. It's, oh, often seems wrong. You know, at work, it's like, how, how do you, it doesn't feel right. And, and I imagine at school, it doesn't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, context, people aren't, like, people aren't expecting, you know, for you to just walk up to them. I, I know that, um, I know somebody that said they, and this person was a Christian, but they, uh, their first year freshman, uh, 
uh, uh, walking into their dorm to meet their roommate, and um, and they introduced themselves, and the person said, "Do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ?" <laughs> <laughs> and it, and you know, and it was like, uh, well, actually, yeah, but. Wow, I mean, <laughs> it was, I mean, this person was taken aback, you know, by just the, how just immediate and, and upfront they were about it. And yeah, it can be, it can be off-putting to people. And yeah, this guy was a Christian, and it was still was put off by it. And, and he understood, you know, where he was coming from and everything. Right? Anyone else? Yeah. <coughs> I don't want to go out and get a you know a master's in divinity or whatever it is, become a theologian. But I, mean, I I sometimes even wonder if I get enough of the basics. Like, you know, you're talking about Jeremiah. Sorry, that doesn't bring anything to mind for me. I I know about Moses and whatever, but I mean, I'm just gonna be totally honest here. Sure. Yeah. No. Absolutely. And um, and you know the funny thing is that we'll we'll get to this, but the being totally honest thing is more important than knowing all the details. Um, so well done, <laughs> and because yeah, I mean, and there's but yeah, there's that. Oh, I'm going to say the wrong thing. I'm going to get my doctrine wrong, you know, or, or something like that, right? Yeah, absolutely. That's a big fear. Uh huh. And uh, yeah, and, and boy, you don't want to tell them the wrong thing, and then they believe the wrong thing, and you know, or or they or you get it you get it wrong, and they go, oh well. I, I don't. I don't want a God like that. <laughs> and uh, and and yet, uh, and, and I'll, I'll I'll respond to that one. That in the in the early church, you know, we think about you know we have these creeds now. We have the Apostles' Creed, and that one, you know, if you you go to church long enough, you got it pretty much memorized, All right? Nicene Creed. If you kind of work at it a little bit, you get that one down, All right? Uh, the Athanasian Creed, yeah, forget it. All right, that one's hard enough even to just you know understand all the words and and stuff. And and every time you know once a year when we do it on Trinity Sunday, um, I always feel like I need to put little footnotes and disclaimers on some thing parts of it and stuff. And um, and yet you know what the first creed was? Jesus is Lord. That was the first Christian creed. And. Um, and uh, it's, it's kind of funny right now. There's a, there's a new book out. I can't even remember the title of it, but it's by Andy Stanley, um, who's a pastor of one of the biggest churches in the country. And uh, and I heard an interview with him talking about the book, and it's it's interesting because he says, you know, um, a lot of people get hung up on like you got to know the Bible, right? And understand. I mean, Andy Stanley is. I know enough about him to know that he believes in biblical inerrancy and, and all that kind of stuff. All right, um, But he says, but there was a church before there was the New Testament. And it wasn't because they had read the Bible that, um, that the church spread. It was because Jesus is risen from the dead. And, um, and it was just simply knowing that fact. Was that was the key, and um, and so he's he's getting a lot of flack from people that haven't read his book and just heard about it, and um, and think that he's saying that we should throw out the Bible or something like that. And it's not what he's saying, um, but you know he's saying, look, you, you don't have to. I mean, all the all this stuff is is valuable. It's important, right? But it's not. You don't have to know all the details. Um. So, um, you know, sometimes we can just feel like, like I'm, you know, not qualified. I'm not. Um, I, I don't. I don't have the, you know, the education. I, I don't have the right skills or whatever it is. Uh, when I was, when when God first called me to the seminary, I was a, a well, okay, He was calling me for about a year um, while I was still in high school, and. Um, as is the custom of the people that God calls, I said no. <laughs> um, 
And and so he kept putting people in my life that said, you should be a pastor, you should be a pastor. And I kept saying no, because I had this picture in my head, a sort of stereotype of what pastors are like, which, I mean, strangely enough, was nothing like my pastor. <laughs> but... Um, but I thought, if, okay, if I'm going to be a pastor, then that's, this is the guy that I have to be. And I'm not that guy. And, um, and, and I also thought, all right, I, um, I've got a lot of friends that aren't Christians. In fact, I hang around with more non-Christians than Christians. And, um, and they know uh, what I believe, and, and we have good conversations and... Um, you know, and some of them have had really negative experiences with the church, but but they appreciate um, what they hear from me about Christianity and stuff. And as it, um, I was when I was in my freshman year of college, and 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 it was really sort of the, this call was sort of getting louder, and and I was saying, but God, if I go into the ministry, then I'm going to be spending all my time with Christians. And um, and I'll be you know helping the people in my church, and I, I know that that's important. But I can talk to people that aren't Christians, and why would you take me out of the mission field? That doesn't make sense to me. Um, but the call just kept getting louder, and uh, and finally I I realized well, it's certainly something that I would enjoy. Uh, it doesn't quite make sense to me, but okay. And so I went to the seminary. And four years at seminary, and, um, and I sat down for my uh, sort of exit interview uh, with the placement advisor, and, and he said, so um, what, are you, what are your hobbies? I said, oh, I like reading comic books and uh, science fiction, fantasy kind of stuff, and, and that... He says, yeah, so about that, um, we're concerned that you won't be able to sort of relate to regular people. So he said, we, we'd like you to take an extra semester of uh, clinical, clinical pastoral education before you, you go out. I said, boy, I really wasn't planning on sticking around another semester. Um, how about I read some, you know, historical fiction novels or something and, uh, you know, sort of learn about real life from those or whatever. And, and they actually agreed to it. Well, I never did read those novels. But, last year, seven out of the top 11 movies in the domestic box office were superhero movies. The world caught up to me. <laughs> and by the way, the other two, um, or the other three or whatever, were also uh, science fiction fantasy movies. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm normal now. <laughs> um, but you know, what I learned is that even my placement advisors, and I understand that they meant well, and I don't hold anything against them, but... At the same time, um, I think, you know what? God called me because he wanted me. He didn't want me to be someone else. If he wanted me to be someone else, he would have called somebody else. Right? And, um, and, so, and, and because of, just because of my interests, I've been able to connect with a lot of people that, that, haven't, that have been disconnected from the church. And, um, and I mean, a lot of our, our youth that, that come to our youth group, boy, I mean, that's where they're at. And so to be able to, to talk to them about stuff that they're interested in and, um, you know, and understand what they're talking about and stuff, it's great. They love it. They call me Pastor Batman Dad. <laughs> that's a long story. But, but, yeah, God called me to be me. And he called each one of you to be you. And he doesn't expect you to be someone else. He doesn't have this sort of Ned Flanders mold that you need to fit into 
that like all Christians have to be a certain way. And, um, and I know if you watch, uh, if you watch like Christian movies, like, you know, like uh, uh, Facing Giants and all those kind of movies, um, there's a lot of sort of stereotypes in those movies. I'm not bashing the movies, I enjoy them, but, um, but, but if you look at those, if you, um, like if you listen, even listen to, to Christian radio and, and things like that, there's, I mean, Christian radio has a target demographic. Right? It's soccer moms. And that's actually who they target. If you're not a soccer mom, or you know, basically a, a, a woman driving her kids around in a minivan, then they're not specifically thinking about you. And uh, all of their marketing is geared toward that demographic. And, and so I know sometimes when I'm listening to it, uh, well, I know sometimes I just don't listen to it because um, it, not a I'm not a soccer mom. <laughs> um, but, but it is the default station in my car. And, um, and, and so, uh, so, but I also often I, I listen to it and I just, it just kind of grates on me a little bit, even though I enjoy a lot of the music. Um, but uh, God called each of you individually and gave each of you different interests, different skills. Um, different different social circles, all that kind of stuff, and um, and and there's there's people in your life that I could never reach, all right, and there's people in my life that you can never reach, all right, and um, but that's what the body of Christ is all about. That each of us is different. I mean, that's the point. Um. So, another great gift is, that God has given to us that I often like to call our God-given superpower is the Office of the Keys, which I didn't, something else I didn't really understand until I got to seminary. Uh, and I'm sure that my pastor explained it to me really well. Um, but I, I just, I didn't quite get it. All right, so Jesus, this is after the resurrection. Jesus appears to his disciples and and says to them, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold the forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Right? So first of all, there's this weird thing where he breathes on them. Right? This is a sort of Greek-Hebrew thing. In both Greek and Hebrew, uh, the word for breath is the same word as spirit. Uh, in fact, we have uh, we use the word expire. When something expires, it's dead, right? All right? Because it has breathed out. It has breathed out all of its breath. It's it's not breathing anymore. All right. And if you're inspired, it's like you've had like, <gasps> and you have new life. It's the inspire spirit. All right. So it's, it's even the same in English, um, probably because it's the same in Latin, but. Um, so, so Jesus breathed on them so you could say he spirited on them he's like holy spirited all over them <laughs> all right? and so he says receive the Holy Spirit if you forgive the sins of any they're forgiven all right? he actually gives us and the reason it's called the office of the keys is, is because he says here's the keys to heaven use them all right? for people for whom heaven is locked because their sin is, is, is weighing them down, you say, look, I've got forgiveness for you. Your low battery uh, oh. thing just triggered on your iPad. So. Oh, well. Well, if anyone's watching, sorry. This will be, this will be posted live, or this will, the video will be posted on the website um, after we get it processed. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, so... Um, so we, we actually, God gives us keys to the kingdom and says, look, you can go unlock the kingdom for people. You can, for, for people whose sins that they feel, oh, I'm, I've, I've got all these sins, and, and so I'm not good enough for God. You can say, no, no, no. I forgive you your sins. Right? And, and, and I forgive you because Jesus gave me that power to forgive your sins. Your sins are forgiven. You're free. You're restored to God. Right? 
He also has, he says, if you withhold forgiveness from any, it's withheld. Right? And so, so for those that, that say, oh, I don't need forgiveness, I'm good. I'm, I'm all set. I don't have any sin that's worth noting. Then you can say, all right, hold on a minute here. Um, you're kind of locking yourself out. And, uh, and so I want to unlock it for you. So let's talk about that. All right? And it's and in in the Lutheran Church we call this dividing law and gospel, right? But it's important to understand that when we talk about this, that this was not just given to pastors, right? Now, for good order in a in a worship service, the pastor will stand up and forgive the congregation, all right? But and and also you can come to. I mean, we, we do also practice private confession. And the advantage of going to a pastor to confess your sin over somebody else is that we have made a solemn vow to, that, that we will die before we will reveal any sins confessed to us. Okay? So it might not have the same trust of, of somebody else. But at the same time, you have the power that, that, that people can confess their sins to you and you can forgive them. And this is, I mean, and, and I call this your God-given superpower because, you know, you think about, okay, so, you know, Superman, he might be able to save someone from a burning building, but he can't save them from ever dying. You can actually give them salvation from death. All right? Jesus said that he who lives and believes in me will never die. Because you're never separated from God. And you give them eternal life. That's about as good a superpower as you could ever have. And he's given it to every one of us. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so God calls us into different places, different situations. And so what I'd like you to do is, is kind of, maybe just with the people around you, um, take a few minutes to, um, there's, there's a couple of, of questions on it. Did everybody get a, a handout? All right. Um, so there's, what I'd like you to do is, uh, you see the question on there. Um, first of all, take a few minutes to talk about where do you go that there are people? I mean, it's like everywhere, right? Okay. So, or maybe another way is where do you go that you talk to people on a, a, any level? <coughs> so uh, just, why don't you just take a moment and uh, we've got some time. We're doing pretty well for time, actually. So, um, so just take some time and uh, sort of gather around. I was I was thinking about doing this in the fire set or in the fellowship room around tables, but then I thought it's so much more comfortable up here. And, um, and so, if you don't mind, kind of scooting together or whatever, and just talk about this isn't necessarily even this is just you know where are there people that you can talk to and you can talk about there's there's different kinds of of you know different ways that you can talk to people. Um, there's some people that you know really well, some people that you barely know at all, or, or maybe don't even know them, um, but still have an opportunity to talk to them. And so just, just take a moment to talk about those, those spaces that you have. Work, work, and more work. What was the other one? Work, work, and more work. Okay, yeah, work, okay. It's like family gathering. Family family is so good. Um, it's in our new training. Can we name it? Um, it's in our new Just to just go into your family and close it. Like my dad now lives in an assisted living place down in the town where he's from. And we see a lot of people there. Um, it's kind of the, not people we know well, but sort of there's every time we go and visit them, there's kind of a group of people that we encounter in the cafeteria and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. You see the same people? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. I think, well, this work, it's a pretty, it's a dominant Christian, but it's also a, not, a lot of non 
practicing. Not that they had that experience, they just don't do that. Okay. So then can you see a little difference in how they handle things then too? Just life in general? Or? Well, no, some are more anxious than others, I would say. I sort of, one, one thing you said, you know, I also grew up in a family that's just so Lutheran that's so... They can't even see straight. Yeah, <laughs> it's, sort of, it's, sort of, it's sort of like there's no conversation about it because it's like everybody's mm -hmm. been Lutheran forever. And like where I work, there isn't, there's not another Lutheran on the property, I don't think. Um, and. I, I just, I wonder about sort of the how do you, how do you talk about or even, uh, yeah, how do you talk about religion in the work environment? Um, <clears throat> and, I, and I think, and I think I've, I've sort of landed on, I don't talk about it, but I, but everybody who's there knows that I sort of, that I am a Christian and that I'm just like, yep, that's what I believe. And, you know, I don't quarrel with them about where they're at. And for the most part, they <coughs> quarrels with me about it. And, and that's kind of... I think it's interesting. It's a spheres of influence because I think when I was growing up, it was that, you know, you live your Christianity and that's how it spreads. Mm -hmm. and, but I don't know that that really is how it spreads. I mean, it, I, not really that, but it seems empty, like you're not reaching out enough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but the, and then, you know, if you don't have the confidence, then, yeah. so then you just fall back more. So I, I have a story that may or, I, I don't have to. I was in the Peace Corps in Eastern Europe mm -hmm. for two years, and I was Lutheran, and there was a church in Riga that uh, during communist time, there was, dis was a disco. It was it Anglican? <laughs> you can see the disco lights there. But it was an Anglican church that was given back to the Anglican church in the UK, but a Lutheran minister from Minnesota was there. It was an ecumenical church. Um, so I would go there occasionally. And I had a couple of friends who um, I would drag, but they, they just wanted to meet other Americans. And it was, and I, I didn't preach at all. It was a flat out, I'm going to church, if you want to come, you can come, situation. And it was a flat out, I'm perfect, try to be content with where I'm at. And I don't think, it's not me, but two of them became baptized, were baptized in that church. Um, one of them actually got on that church board in a very oddball way, and it made me Prince Charles because of it. But um, that's a whole different world. But yeah, it, I think sometimes the whole live your life, but, but live it authentically. Um, where people, where people know you still like them, even if you're not Christian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's my story of that whole concept. I'm not directly sharing the just getting indirectly. And I agree with the work, work environment too because um, it was my second, third week in the job and I requested to leave a little early. I asked my supervisor, so oh, Brian, can I leave early? So I was going so I saw him go to church and church. I was like, okay. <laughs> I took him to find out, long story short, he's an atheist. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he even said a lot one day about being an atheist and his views on things. Not conversation wise, because I've heard him and a lady that used to work there, she was transferred to, like, well, not because of that reason, but I mean, closer to home or But um, would go back and forth, and it's just like, the co-worker, I, I just started there, like, what are they doing here? Oh, here they go again. She's, not, I don't know what the word you're talking about, but I mean, they were going back and forth. <laughs> and it was like, oh boy. <laughs> and then eventually stopped, but it was like, wow. I've never heard that before either. It's kind of, there's a couple other, and a lot of people 
them there at work when I go to church and when I do and stuff. And, oh, what are you doing on the weekends? And I tell them. And sometimes when they find out, it's like, and even the, even the guy that I've been training in looks at me like, okay, that's cool, but you know, I don't go to church, and you know, I say, okay, I respect that. You know, just, mm-hmm. if you guys come on down, I'll just tell you, know, mm-hmm. be honest. <laughs> mm-hmm. And just won't be pushy or nothing, so, okay. You know. <coughs> I guess I, my attitude has been traditionally is I'm authentic about it. I mean, I don't beat in with, in, over the head with the fact that I go to church and I'm a Christian. Yeah. Um, but I do also, I let work in a small office and it gives them breathing room to <coughs> not talk about it. I mean, we don't have deep theological yeah. conversations by any stretch. But by being a Christian, it gives other people the opportunity to be, you know, to express their Christianity or be there and say it's okay. I've had that happen too, or um, <laughs> ask me questions or something, or get what I know, if I don't know, the last two Yeah, it's. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> and sometimes, I'm sorry, sometimes I want to approach like, right, my supervisor or something, and like, what do I say? <laughs> I don't want to just. So I'm just going kind to of, kind of stand up as you want to turn The Holy Spirit will be you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. I go roller skating on Wednesday night, and my wife and I have gone for about three years. She's passed away now, but we were, we've gone for about three years. We chose that over the YMCA, partly for exercise and partly because we skated way back in the 50s. So it was just good. Well. It has turned out that um, I, I bring cookies every week. <laughs> and I've shared with some people that the church that I go to in Cottage Grove, we get them from Cub. They, they give us day old. And so that's where they come from. And, and I've just shared that. And I guess that's why people kind of know that I attend church. Well, I had a, a gal probably a year ago or so I sit in a booth when I'm not skating, and, and the person next in the booth next to me leaned over and she said, would you pray with me? And I did. Well, I expect that's because she, the cookie thing, that's probably where she knew about it. Well, uh, one of the gals, um, just prior to Christmas, invited me on Christmas Day to come to her house. And she knows that I'm by myself. and. So she invited me to her house. Well, I thought that that was, she was going to have her family over and she was just going to include me. Well, we were planning to have a meal. And so I went to it. It turned out that it wasn't her family, although some of her family members were there. There were 10 of us that were invited from the skating rink to her house. And that's what it was. We all sat around the table, had a good meal. And then when the meal finished, the hostess, shared with us some uh, things about Christmas. And then all around the table, everyone talked about Christmas's past that they had enjoyed and Mm -hmm. kind of talked about themselves. So it was, it made my day. (laughs) Because I didn't have somewhere else to go. (laughs) Another experience that I had, this was pretty funny. Um, My old girlfriend, um, she lived by herself in her house and a neighbor around the block was helping her with some things around there. And I cut her grass all summer last year. I, I cut it every year, every week I should say. Well anyway, this gal that's helping her, I, I stopped over there one day and I said, I want to get to know you because you're helping Nancy and I am and we should know each other. We should exchange addresses and phone numbers because of that. So I went over there one day and she was shoveling her driveway. She has a really long driveway. So I helped her move some snow. She dug into the snow drift, sat down, and asked me to pray with her. <laughs> Which I did, but it, it just it surprised me. <laughs> well, you were mentioning that um, that gentleman who just got let go, he was a temp where I was working. It seems like Every so often there's a temp, 
he expresses his Christianity so well, more than myself. <laughs> this guy, he he said, I'm going to do something. I said, what's that? He said, well, I know you're a Christian, you and Angie. He wanted to take us out to breakfast. I said, okay, we prayed and we were talking. He said, at work, and he did it once or twice. He was going to take them out for dinner, but then take them out in the car. And the third Christian, you know, trying to, not convert him, but I mean, trying to. And uh, he took one person out, and they accepted. That person that accepted Jesus, and he did, and he said he always has, but that reassurance. And he was going to try that with um, this other guy, and I was like, well, um, good luck, because he's an atheist, and you might, I don't know, I, I maybe he can, but he got let go, but um, <laughs> at work, the guy, something went really good, and he's like, praise the Lord out loud, and I'm like, Wow. <laughs> like, and the, it's not a younger guy, he's an older gentleman. I mean, I suppose just um, work to do something, you know, to get out of the house. And, but I mean, the way he expressed it, I mean, I'm pretty sure Brian heard it once in a while. Now, he wouldn't do it all the time, but it's something that went good or something. I was like, wow, that's a little gutsy. <laughs> but, um, when I was in college working at um, <clears throat> uh, Wendy's, uh, we had a, uh, um, a there was one of the girls that worked there heard something about me being a Christian, and she said, "You're not a Christian." Right? Yeah, I am. <laughs> 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 no. And, uh, and and like meanwhile, some of the coworkers who knew me a little better have worked there a little longer. <coughs> they just started cracking up because they're like, yeah, "He's going to be going to seminary. He's going to be a pastor." And and and, and, and she's she wouldn't believe any of us. <laughs> and I said, "All right, so I'm a little concerned right now. Um, why is it so unbelievable that you know that you just can't believe that I'm a Christian?" And she said, "Well, you're not pushy." <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, you know, I had had while I was there different sort of faith conversations, and uh, I mean, I, I wore a at the time I, I wore a jean jacket that had like a big painted cross on the back of it and and stuff, and um, but uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was like oh. Because she had this picture of what Christians were like, and it had nothing to do with Christianity. Um, and and but you know I was I wasn't I wasn't pushy, and and so so I was okay. Like oh, so um, so we're gonna we'll we'll talk more um, in later classes about kind of what to do in those situations. Um, but. Uh, for for now, um, well, first of all, let me ask, what? Uh, let me just jot down the notes. Um, what are the questions do you have going into this? Any questions about tonight, or other questions you sort of came with that you're hoping to get answered? Yeah, how, how do you, uh, I mean, I guess the, the, the question I came in with is, is how, how do you, how does a person outreach without being pushy? Because my stereotype in my head is exactly what you encountered when you were a kid. It's like, well, yeah, that's the, the, the the, the people who are the Christians are the ones who are, are asking you, you know, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus? Mm -hmm. and, it's, and it's, you know, at, at least around the people that I deal with day in and day out, I get punched in the nose if I, if I ever said anything like that. Sure. And, and, I, and I deserve it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 
And so that was kind of that was sort of what I was wondering about coming. Okay. Something I do. Um, the bulletins here, the morning bulletin for Sunday, is so good, and it's got Old Testament, New Testament, and Gospel in it. And I have now, for a long time, dropped off a copy of that to this one that was helping Nancy. And I asked her the other Sunday, I said, do you still want me to? Oh, she really wants me to drop those off. And I also give her the portals of prayer when it comes out. And um, in fact, I take several of those and I give them to people around my block. Um, and but I, I think the book, morning bulletin is so good in that it has all of that in there. And if a person doesn't go to church, they can get the gospel from the bulletin, just reading it. And um, it may encourage them to begin to come to church too. So that's one way that I feel that I've been reaching out. And the people that I give the uh, portals of gospel are portals of prayer to really appreciate it because of the size. I mean, most of the time it's that little one that is really hard to read in. So I've been giving them to people that may have a hard time reading the smaller version of it. Now, I had suggested that we should put a stamp on the back of them for the church, for, for the, the address of the church, and that should be on there. If someone is searching, they would have somewhere that they could begin to search. It's a good idea. Yeah. I think the other question is how to recognize your own blind spots. Um, when I was in high school, somehow, high schools do, we, we picked up a friend in a group in our youth group at church who was not Christian. We didn't grow up with it. And, and I think she came from, you know, someone else, you know, and she fit in well, well and all that. But she made a comment once, I don't understand how, I'm jealous of you because you just always had that thing. Mm -hmm. And I think um, I've observed, like when my, my family, who's super duper Lutheran, um, when they talk about non-Christians, there's there's a disconnect that I don't they can't see it. They can't see that yeah, that the language you use is maybe off putting because you make an assumption that it just happens. And that it's there's not a fight within somebody. And how to recognize that fight that their own internal battles or the, to find faith. It's not as painless and it's not as simple as you don't think it is. Yeah. Yep. And there's no cookie cutter. I'll tell you that right now. Right? It, we're all different. And um, whether you're a Christian or not, um, we're all different. And uh, and so, yeah, there's no, there is no magic incantation. That if you just say these words, now there's been lots of tools that have been put out there that people have used, um, and uh, and we'll actually talk about those next time a little bit. But and and some of those tools are valuable and, and useful, and others not so much. And sometimes it's a matter of how you use them uh, it can make a big difference. And um, and so um, so the next the next couple of weeks. Uh, Next week is uh, um, actually before I get to the next couple of weeks um, on the bottom of your sheet uh, you'll see it says homework so I want to um, challenge you obviously you're not going to be graded on this or anything okay um, not sure what I do with grades anyway <laughs> I used to do grades in confirmation class until I par had a parent say, so what is the difference if my kid gets a B or a C? <laughs> and I said, I don't know, good question. I just wanted to let you know kind of in general how they're doing. <laughs> and it was sort of like, hmm. 
yeah, there's really not much point to this, is there? <laughs> and um, so, but um, make a list of, of three people or places that God has called you um, to where you'll focus on spreading the love of Christ this year. Right? You don't have to know how, but to just, and, and I encourage you to pray about this and say, God, you know, you've put me in all kinds of different situations, places. You brought all kinds of people into my life. Right? Open my eyes and, and, and you know, maybe there's more, but I thought I don't want to overwhelm anybody. And uh, sometimes it's, it's nice to start, of, start out and you know, just kind of get your feet wet in a few places and, um, and just focus on those places. And uh, so think of those as, as your personal mission fields. And, uh, and then number two, develop a system to remind you to pray for those mission fields daily and look for opportunities to love in those fields. All right? And so, um, so we'll get into methodology in a couple of months. Uh, next month we're going to... Um, next week, next month. I keep saying week. Um, even there. <laughs> um, so next month we're gonna we're gonna do the don'ts first, um, and uh, kind of talk about red flags, how to avoid getting punched in the nose, <clears throat> and uh, and then the following month we'll get into some more of the mechanics of of the do's. All right. So meanwhile, um, I'll I'll sum it up with with love your neighbor. That's actually the first step. Um, and, uh, well, that's the second step. The first step is love God. <clears throat> and, um, and and even more importantly, know how much He loves you. And uh, so actually our, our third session, if I'm remembering the order right off the top of my head, um, is going to be on actually on, on spiritual growth. Because the more equipped you are, the... Um, the, the better able you're going to be able to do this. Um, and uh, so while there's no, there's no such thing as being qualified, because really none of us are qualified, um, at the same time, uh, there are ways that m- make it easier. And, um, and so we'll get to that. So, um, so those, are, those will be the next three. And then... Uh, yeah, and then the last one is, is kind of a culmination review kind of thing. And um, and not I mean not just a review, but kind of tying it all together. So um, so I'd like you to, to start in thinking about those places. All right. Um, we use these, you know, we, we have called missionaries that specifically go to you know to different places and, and uh, it's sort of a, a career, so to speak, you know, that that, that is their like that's their job, um, and um, and yet at the same time, God calls each of us to be local missionaries in our in our local context. Um, and actually, that that question that I mentioned before, that big struggle that I had, where I said, God, why um, why are you calling me to be a pastor? Because you're taking me out of the mission field. Well, it took me about ten years to figure it out. Um, until finally I realized, oh, there's only so many people that I personally can reach. But if I can train missionaries, if I can train the people of my congregation to be missionaries into their local context, then I can indirectly, through them, reach so many more. And I'll say I learned it's not about me. <laughs> Right. Um, but but it, all of a sudden it made sense. Oh, this is this is how the church works. This is this multiplication that God does, where you have, you make disciples and those disciples train disciples. And we'll talk more about that um, in, in a future class. Um, but uh, but this is this is the joy that God has called us to. And um, and, and I hope that, that as we go through this, that that you'll find that. It's um, that that while there are there are little tricks and things that, that you can do that, that just sort of make it helpful, um, the same way that with uh, in you know youth group we do icebreakers and stuff with with new kids, and that um, 
that that at the same time, really, what it comes down to is is just loving people and um, and knowing how much you loved. Any, any other questions? Um, I, I want to encourage you as as questions pop up for you over the next month, write them down and. You can, by all means, uh, give them to me in advance, if you can. Um, so that that way, if, if it's something that I don't have an immediate answer to, uh, you know, I can kind of work that in and, and look things up or whatever. Um, but also, uh, you know, if but if you just if something comes up right before class or whatever, or you just don't get a chance to to talk to me about it in advance or, or whatever, then you know, by all means, uh, bring your questions. So one of the big reasons that I wanted to space this out into doing just once a month instead of once a week is to, to have a chance to, um, to, to kind of take all this stuff and really have some time to think about it. And, um, and so, so I hope that you'll take it, um, take it home. Feel free to talk to other people. Um, and while this is being recorded and we'll have it available online for people that missed it, uh, I also don't want anyone to think that if you missed the first one, then you know, the rest of it won't make sense. And um, <clears throat> so, so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that they'll be uh, sort of self-contained um, at the same time. When is the next session? So the next session would be the third Tuesday of February. Which is? I don't know. And we don't remember dates anymore because we have this issue. That mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. um, this should be, should be the 18th? 18th. Right, 19th. No, 19th, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, 19th of February. Okay. <coughs> All right. Anything else? All right. And let's close with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you for this amazing gospel. Um, we thank you for the honor that you've bestowed on us, that not only are we your children, and, and what an amazing honor that is, but, um, but that you have you adopted us into your family and said, hey, you know what, there's still a lot of orphans out there. And um, so, so go and feel free to invite them uh, so that they can be adopted too, because I love them too. And so open our eyes to the orphans around us and um, help us to show them the amazing love that you have for your children and, and open our eyes to opportunities to let them know that that love is available to them and is already given to them. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen.